I am uh, Chris Hosey, director of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, and we wanted to come back uh, this afternoon and present you with a little more of a timeline of the events that have taken place here today and, and what we know up to this point with the investigation. At approximately 10.20 a.m. this morning, the Barr County Sheriff's Office uh, received alerts about reports of an active shooter and radio traffic from school resource officers concerning the same concern, or having the same concern. Within minutes, law enforcement was on scene, as well as two school resource officers assigned here to the school who immediately encountered the subject within just minutes of this report going out. Once they encountered the subject, the subject immediately surrendered to these officers and he was taken into custody. Additionally, what I want you to know as of now, there are four uh, individuals who are deceased from this incident, nine that have been taken to local hospitals with various injuries. Uh, of those that were, have, are deceased, two are students and two are teachers here at the, at the school. The priority right now for us within this investigation is to gather all the facts, to make sure that we're accurate with it because this is a murder investigation. As the sheriff mentioned earlier this morning, the shooter is in custody. His name is Colt, that's C-O-L-T, Gray. He is a 14-year-old student here at the school, G-R-A-Y. He is a 14-year-old student here at the high school. Again, he has been taken into custody. Uh, he, is, he will be charged with murder and he will be tried as an adult. And, uh, handled as an adult. We're coordinating these charges and obviously this investigation with District Attorney Brad Smith, who is the District Attorney for the Piedmont Judicial Cir uh, Circuit here. Since earlier this morning, we talked with you and since the incident occurred, numerous interviews have been taking place through our investigation with students, faculty, uh, as well as any other witnesses that we could identify. Law enforcement had a very, very swift response to this incident once the, the incident was, was determined that there was a concern here. Those resources, whether it was in that response or throughout this investigation to assist, came obviously from the Sheriff's Office here, from uh, other local law enforcement agencies, state law enforcement agencies, and the uh, federal law enforcement agencies as well, uh, to include not to be left out multiple EMS personnel, multiple fire personnel uh, and agencies. Those agencies responded here as well today and I am extremely grateful as I know the sheriff is for that quick response and the partnerships of working here together uh, with what all has gone on. Currently from the investigative perspective, we have crime scene agents and, and other special agents from the GBI from close to a dozen of our different uh, work units from across the state uh, that have responded here today to work on this investigation. Again, collecting evidence, conducting interviews, and so forth. I do want to pass this along, uh, that if anyone has any information uh, that wants to be passed on concerning this investigation, that they can do that anonymous, anonymously at our tip line at 1-800-597-TIPS or 1-800-597-8477. They can also report this on, uh, by downloading the See Something, Send Something app. That can be done by Android or Apple phones, either one. Uh, to, to, if they need to report any, uh, any uh, tips concerning this investigation. Uh, let me close out before I turn this over to the sheriff and, and let you just remind you that this is still a very active investigation. There is still a lot that is very fluid. Uh, there's still a lot of interviews to be conducted. Uh, that will continue on into the night, as well as, as crime scene work and collecting and, and gathering evidence. But what more is more important for me to mention here to you is, is my heartfelt uh, sympathy to uh, the parents, the students that were, in, that were here today. Uh, regardless of, of where they were in the school, this has got a great impact uh, on them, as well as on this community. Uh, my thoughts and prayers along with everybody standing behind me and every law enforcement agency in this state and many, I will, I will tell you, around this country, uh, they are in our thoughts and prayers. And we will continue with that. 
Uh, we ask for your patience uh, as we continue through this and we'll continue to try to give you as many updates with information as we can to keep you informed. Uh, but thank you for being here. I'm now going to turn it over to Barra County Sheriff Judge Smith. Thank you. H-O-S-E-Y. Good afternoon. I'm Sheriff Judge Smith of the Barra County Sheriff's Office. I never imagined I never imagined that I would be speaking to the media in my career over something that happened today, the pure evil that happened today. I cannot thank the people behind me for the support they give me today, to give this office and give this staff. This hits home for me. I was born and raised here. I went to school in this school system. My kids go to this school system. I'm proud of this school system. My heart hurts for these kids. My heart hurts for our community. But I want to make it very clear that hate will not prevail in this county. I want that to be very clear and known. Love will prevail over what happened today. I assure you of that. It is very early as to what happened. Governor Kemp reached out to me and has provided me every single resource that he has to make sure justice prevails. I don't know why it happened. I may not ever know. We may not ever know. But I ask that you and our community lift up our schools, lift up our public safety, and that, again, we do not let this hateful event prevail as to what happened today. I want to thank the surrounding agencies and counties and cities and state and federal authorities that have come and provided us because they prevented a lot of more tragic events from happening. Continue to lift up these families, continue to lift up our students and our kids and know that love will prevail. At this time, I'm going to ask Dr. LaDuff, our school superintendent, to come and speak on behalf of the school. Good afternoon. I'm Dallas LaDuff. I'm the superintendent of Bear County School System. I want to thank the Bear County Sheriff's Office and all of our law enforcement partners for their swift response today, along with that of our staff. I'd also like to thank our community for their response and patience as we work to reunify the stu uh, students with their families here today and secure the rest of our school campuses. Our schools will be closed for the remainder of this week as we cooperate fully with law enforcement to get answers to the many questions that we all have about this incident here today. But as we are closed, our central offices will remain open where we will have grief counseling available for our community uh, every day this week and thereafter as we support each other through this terrible event. In closing, I just want to say to our community, as a school system, we are here for you, we support you, and we are ready to, to get you any support that you may need as we grieve through this together. Thank you. Well, shortly, if, if someone decides to take a firearm into a school where kids are given a, an education or entitled to an education and want to harm others, to me, it's hateful. Obviously, the shooter was armed, and our school resource officer engaged him. And the shooter quickly realized that if he did not give up, that it would end with an OIS. 
an officer involved shooting. He gave up, got on the ground, and the deputy took him into custody. Sheriff, any idea how the weapon got inside the school? And was there any warning that this was going to happen? Not that I'm aware of. Again, very early, and we're still looking into that whether or not or how he obtained it and how he got it in the school. Sure. 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 All with his parents or his family to learn more about what led up to these moments? We have. Any information you can share? No. What kind of it, 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 seems like you have a, it seems like you have a large Hispanic population. Have you been able to communicate with the people in their language to make sure that everybody knows what's happening? Yes, sir, I have. The school, the school and our office has uh, people that speak in Spanish, and they have spoke to those folks as well. Yes. How is the shooter speaking with the law enforcement now? Sorry. Is the shooter talking? Is he saying why? The shooter was interviewed. And he is he was speaking with our investigators early earlier along with the GBI. How is that video surveillance? How does that help you, Sheriff? It is it is helping our investigation. Sheriff, does this none that I'm aware of. What were all nine injured victims shot? In some capacity, yes. Sheriff, can you tell us about the two individuals deceased and was one targeted? We don't know of any targets at this point. We're not identified. We have not identified that at this point. No. Sheriff, is there a connection? This is the last question I'm going to take. Sheriff, is there a connection between the shooter and the victims? None that I'm aware of. I know that I know that you have a lot of questions about the student and that we mentioned that we identified earlier. Keep in mind that that it, that's part of our investigation. That we're looking into every aspect of that individual. His connection here at the school, uh, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, he was a student here. So as part of our investigation, we're looking into all aspects, current and prior, uh, involving that individual. Can you tell us how many rounds were fired? Can you tell us how many rounds were fired? Do what? The shooter, the shooter is, was. is a student, yes. A student. Can we, expect we do not know how many rounds. Detector, has that, has that, the shooter had any past history of law enforcement? For now, this is the information that we have. It is an active investigation. I assure you, we will. We do plan to come back out here in a couple of hours. It, please make sure you're following the GBIX page. That's where we're going to be putting the updates. If there's anything that, that's new, we'll make sure that we share that information. It's still very early. Investigators have a lot of work to do. We appreciate your patience. Do expect another in-person news conference out here in the next few hours monitor the X page and we'll be sure to update you accordingly. Thank you.